Hello, welcome back to Gordian Quest. It's a title screen because it's a new day. We're going to carry on. Did I... Are there multiple save slots? There are multiple save slots. Wow. Wow, oh, there's five. That's sick. Great news. In case I wanted to do like a concurrent run. I think I'm going to try to finish this run before I stream it. Oh, yeah. They updated the amount of time in the campaign book. Huh. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, you know. I suppose the campaign is longer than it, they said it was in the first, or rather longer than I said it was in the first look because they've updated it to say 15 to 30 hours. Is that in the patch notes? I gotta look. Yeah, I'm just, I'm skimming. Hmm, I don't see it. 1.0623. Ah, oh, they added a new hero and act four. I see. All right. Well, anyway, let's get back to it. <laughs> I think that's kind of funny. I said I'd like this campaign to be a little longer than 5 to 10. 15 to 30? Yeah, I think that that's like, that's actually an extremely comfortable duration. And I think that they didn't actually change anything other than the tooltip, right? So, you know, whatever, man. I, I think that's kind of funny. Can I get someone else from the guild hall yet? No. Oh, I can spend my renown. Bertram's base stats, kudos, seek runes. Can I, I can unlock an artifact. Now, the game feels loud to me, and I am going to trust that it's not, because I watched most of the last episode. The last episode has not gone up yet, by the way, uh, but I wa I've watched a lot of that, and it does not feel loud. It seems like it's a good volume. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm suspicious, that's all. Okay, anyway. Uh, so, last we left off, I can actually check the journal. Last we left off. There's troubling times, we gotta help these guys, and then uh, we're gonna help them by defending the garrison. Now uh, we gotta get Bertram. Oh, but we can pick, we can pick who we get. We can get Bertram or we can get uh, this lady. I wonder if the other one dies. It'd be pretty wild. Okay, so the map is gonna expand out from here, I understand now. I have 153 gold. I don't need to really rest or anything. Oh, I should rest if I want to clear my exhaustion. Right, remember that? I took exhaustion last time. This one melee attack has two sockets. That's for a card and for a blue gem. This one intelligence. Can I see... I can chat. Intro. Hey there, I'm Jun, resident blacksmith at your service. Granted, it doesn't look like much, but it's the best we can do until something's done about the undead out there. They came from nowhere without warning. Look, I'm pretty handy with a hammer, but those things, they were vicious. I'm glad to have made it back here alive. All right, well, that's cool. I imagine that you can actually learn things. Oh, I was about to ask, what I was looking for is, can I see if I'm currently wearing something? The answer is, yeah, you just hover over it. I am not wearing shoes, so I'll buy these shoes. Let me check your sword. You have a Warblade, which is plus two melee attack. This grants you Feral Leap? Mm, I'm okay. I would like to go to your equipped items. Here's some shoots. Now, where do I rest? Is it here? Can I rest here, Sister Ophelia? No. Maybe there's no inn? Because they said we should rest while we can. But I'm not... Captain Roderick? Repairs? It's nothing fit for royalty, but it'll have to do in short... In a short while, we'll have the forge up and running for service. Work in a bit and match with... Ah, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a short while, I will be able to rest. I gotcha. Skill grid? Oh, okay. Uh, I see now. We can navigate top right. So, I, I roughly know the characters. This lady is... Like a paladin type, and this guy is a ranger. I think that for our party, well, first of all, my plan is to basically take three characters and run with them for the entire game. So, you know, I'm I'm feeling like it's probably better to take the ranger than it is the paladin lady. I don't know that for sure. She she has felt pretty weak to me. Yeah, I want to I want to take her because I've taken Bertram and I've been like, oh yeah, this guy is good. When I took this lady, I had her in my own run, and I thought she was awful. So oh. I want to try her. Hello, Catherine. Reinforcements at last. There's a big group of undead ahead that need dealing with. Brace yourself. 
No. I will not be bracing myself today. Yeah, I hope you've been enjoying the series, though. I have not uploaded the first episode yet. Uh, I'm recording this on the 27th. I will probably upload the first episode on the 28th. Just gonna take a take a little bit to make sure I get a, th a thumbnail that I like and such. I think I might try to recreate that front thumbnail, you know, like the the thumbnail that's in the uh, in the first look, but then only use the characters I'm playing as, maybe. But I don't know. Holy shit, she's thirty four. Wait a second, it's a lot of damage. This guy's got 48, but he has 25% physical resistance. Right, and the melee attack is going to go middle, top, bottom. I assume these can't move. All damage taken by a unit directly behind will be transferred to this unit instead. Oh, that's pretty cool. Alright. This is targets two random cells. Oh, and he's just missing our, our boy. Right. Fine, fine. I gotta, I gotta re reacclimate myself here. Bear with me. Just obliterate this enemy. Okay, I'm I'm glad to see our initiative roll starting to be not as clean. Did he? Hang on. You can guard and it. Okay, so if they have guard, it cancels the vulnerable. You see that? It popped up the word guard there. I did not recognize. There's some. There have been some guard items or some guard attacks that say something to the effect of Pierce's guard. Catherine, you have more... You have more mana. You could have gone again. No, there, there have been things that pierced guard, and I thought that's weird that the status effect pierces guard. Maybe there's some sort of upgrade that makes it do damage or something. No, no. I get it now. I tend guard to self and allies behind. Shoot. Deal eight. Deal eight. Oh, and my man's guard didn't go down this time around. That's interesting. Maybe it doesn't go down in the campaign or something? I'm not so sure. And Pierre here, he has drawn, like, absolute garbage. My man is doing... nothing. Now, I guess, to be fair, these draws... Oh, his guard did go... Okay, so the guard doesn't go down until the start of their next turn. I gotcha. In my mind, I thought it would be... Guard goes down uh, at the end of the round, right? Like, after the last enemy goes. But it's actually... And that makes a lot of sense, because imagine uh, after, after guarding up and blocking all that damage, the enemy goes first and you just eat shit, right? That, that makes a lot of sense. I 100% understand why it works like that, but... It's, just, it's weird to think about it, I suppose. Because this is a different game than... But rather, I guess what's different about this is the initiative system, right? Because typically, a game like this... Hey, Catherine, what the hell? Get out of here. Typ typically, uh, games like this are in order, right? Because it's control. Does eight... I think it's, it's doing less because of the... Yeah, I mean, I know why. Oh, yeah, exhaustion. So you can probably... I like having this guy, Pierre, here just kind of punch through a backliner. Yeah, get to work. Now, Catherine, you sent yourself. Like, what the hell are you doing there? Pierre, you can channel. What is she doing there? You're like, I can't block for you. What are you doing? You're gonna do 40? Oh, she's doing this because she's doing a heavy blow. Deal 40. But, will it actually do 40? She's hitting this guy? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't like that. It says close range, so I'm assuming that maybe not. 20. This will, do, this will give you enough critical. I should have actually done that attack first, but... There it is. And you can kill it there. Really good turn. Now, if you want to hit... Yeah, you're going to hit the guy who's here, and I don't think she'll kill him, though. Because... Oh, now, now she will. Never mind. Take it back. Now she's got it. 
Great job. Now, is she going to do shield block on this turn? What do you feel? Is she going to do shield block here? Does it go in order of her hand? No, I don't want to move there. It does, I believe. So I think she's going to do shield block here, and then next turn maybe she does righteous blow, heavy blow, follow through, smite if it goes that long. Not 100% sure on that, but that's my hypothesis here. Beam spawn? <laughs> yeah, sure, man. Yeah, cool. I'm fighting the steam spawn. Game Newell, who? Alright. Oh, he guarded against the effect, I think. The chill? I think he guarded against the chill there. Uh, now, the barricade says that it's going to block for my man, so I'm going to assume it's going to block for my man here. It says, all damage taken by unit directly behind will be transferred to this unit instead. Holy moly. Lucius, can you draw better? What the hell, man? This is, this is like, a, this is atrocious. <laughs> here I was thinking I didn't have enough block. I have too much block. What the heck? Again, though, uh, as we learned in yesterday's episode, I should block because it gains SP and it, uh... Now, I mean, now we also know it carries through, right? That block, if an enemy rolls high initiative, it'll still block, right? Like, yeah, he has it, uh, presumably, for the first little bit here. God, what the hell? <laughs> this is terrible. Oh my god. Well, I guess we just block up. Yeah, we build our SP. Not even a reason to mana charge, because we have a full channel. Am I losing my mind? Do I just have all... I guess my deck is just all blocks, isn't it? Like, this is five blocks in his deck. Wowee. I didn't realize. It's fine, I think. You just have to, yeah... You basically, the deck's plan right now is to make it count when you draw actual damage. Like this, I'm gonna move you on over and pop 28 there. It did show me 28, okay. And that was 75% reduced, okay, okay. I think that it's a little finicky, but in enough hours I will grasp the mechanics without any issue. Armor, my face protects me, I mean, it was the shield, but who am I to say? I rolled an... Oh my god, he rolled a 15? Whoa! Hey, man. Reality warp? On round star teleports a random hero to a random cell. Oh, so these are... By the way, these are the improved enemies, right? Because, like, this is the normal bone warrior. This is the steam spawn bone warrior who has uh, retained guard and 60 more HP. And probably stronger attacks. Wow, it is like a significant increase in power with the higher tier enemies, isn't it? Okay, well, we're gonna take some time here to figure this turn out now. I have actual damage I can play. So, what have I learned? Uh, one, I need to break armor before I try to apply a debuff. That is step one. Two, I'm kind of feeling like with this hand, my best play... Oh, this is a melee because it's a shocking touch. That complicates things, but not by a ton. I think my best play is going to be to try and use my spells to focus this Venom face down. What are you doing? You're doing nine. Maybe I just go through the front, right? Maybe I'm supposed to go front to back, but also we have 12 and then this is... Does this one do more? Oh, because it's upgraded. So this does 10, this does 20, that's 30... 37. I can do like 48 to this enemy. Hmm. What did what did our what did our boy here draw? Not that one, I wanna do eleven apply four bleed, do eleven apply four bleed. Uh, like one damage off of having to clean kill on this enemy. Okay, so we're gonna weapon throw okay, okay, I kill the front two here. Gotcha. Final answer. Lock it in. So you're gonna go magic missile, magic missile, ice shard or shocking touch. What does potent do? Hmm. 
What is what is potent? Oh, applied status on the skill ignores guard. There it is. Okay, so I could have led with that if I wanted to. I want to do the chill though, because chill pierces. I almost want to get you out of this. Oh yeah, there's a name chat. Okay, yeah, you should get the hell out of here. Oh, but do you see this ordering thing going on? Oh no, it's not. Okay. So I thought this guy's attack does knockback. I thought I was about to get knockbacked into this and then sent. Okay, so what did I see that made me change my opinion on this turn? I saw the play weapon throw. Throw the rend. Killing this enemy. Followed by then rending this guy with the improved damage to kill him. That is what I saw there. Now, unfortunately, you don't have enough block to avoid this hit. But what I could do is I could actually just kick this guy into into uh, Catherine because she is blocking up. She goes before him. Uh, was that nine nine block, twelve damage? It's probably fine. Uh, interestingly, I'm I'm interested to see what knockback does here. Does it make them switch positions, I guess, is my question. And that guy dies. Let me turn that zoom in off. How do you feel about the zoom in? It does make them switch positions. Gotcha. Hang on. Did you see that? She took three, right? She took three, but it doesn't seem like she should have taken three, does it? Maybe the armor... Block isn't reduced, but you still have to have enough block to not get hit by it. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, I'm gonna annihilate these enemies now with chill. This guy is extremely dead. And if I go fast enough, I assume that she will retarget here. This is a good fight. This is like, this is the first fight that I think I've had that made me really feel like I. I don't quite have the damage here. I really feel like I had to put in a lot of thinking to make sure that I came out of this one okay, which is good. I feel like this is a great sign for the depth of content this game is going to give me. I wonder how it chooses which card they play. Oh god, you should have definitely blocked, brother. You got shot. Anyway, that's one down. I'm glad I played on this difficulty. I, I think that this is... It's like I don't know the synergies and such, and some of the mechanics are a little clunky. But I'd rather learn and have it be punishing, I feel. Uh, you're fine to just move. I could have, you know what, that was wrong, because I should have moved him. Pierre should have moved here, not here. But this lets him do two. Oh, that did six and then eight. Six vulnerable, eight shock. That didn't do 68. Imagine that card did 68. Holy shit, that would, I mean, one energy do 68. Does that seem good to you? I don't know, it's kind of close, isn't it? I could weapon throw, but I just wanna... I don't think I need to. Oh yeah, I, I also shifted him in to get, get the kill. He's at the... oh, he's not at the shock. Did she have armor? I think she had armor. I think... yeah, yeah, okay. I see. So... You still take damage from... Ugh. I shouldn't just end my turn. I need to play these and get my my purple power back. But like, oh god, just die. So armor doesn't ar the block doesn't tick down, but it, any damage over the block still hits you. That makes sense. Okay. That was not bad. Oh. Oh. The other end of the garrison may need aid as well. We should hurry over. Oh, we get to we get to grab both of them. I see. All right, Catherine, we can make you a mender. Let's see what we get. I'm going to read through all of these real quick, if you don't know. First of all, let's start from the top. Cleric, chain forward, repeat on adjacent targets. Gain a channel, gain a channel, deal 18 burn damage, channeled spell, deal 9 fire damage, sorry, burn damage, apply 9 vulnerable, or 6 fire damage, 9 vulnerable, 28 damage. So these are like, Cleric here is like, you build and channel... Uh, you, you build your channel, and then you spend channel on big cash-out cards. Like, deal 18 burn, deal 28, gain 2. I mean, this isn't a channel, but, like, this is the cash-out, and you play big cards and then cash-out. And you get armor here, guard here, and you get also a little bit of healing, right? 
You get a little bit of healing. This is also an intelligence-based class. Reverend. These cards. Uh, this is the cash out. It looks like where you channel and then cash out on big smites. Gain two focus. Ah, next melee attacks will grant, oh, grant channel. Enforcer, this is the one that I played when I played her. Press the attack. This is like a uh, magic missile kind of. But it's also free. But you need a lot of draw, I think, to support this. You get some free attacks, you get some shield blocks, you get to give a target might and critical. Lastly, you got Mender, which looks like it's just yeah, heal. Just spending purple to heal, spending energy to give regen. When you heal an ally, purge two on them and retain. Remove a status if unspecified, removes the oldest first. Mm. These all seem pretty cool. And eventually I'll play them all. The one that calls to me first is probably Cleric. Oh, so Cleric is what I'm going to take. And, oh, we leveled up as well. Let's do it. I want to give you... Good question, what do I want to give you? I'm going to give you an increase, in, increase of cards rank. I... One of these magic missiles was upgraded. Maybe it was like a random upgrade thing? Could be. Cards here level 8 for Ice Nova. Let's do... Do a magic missile. I like the idea of trying to build this deck for him around uh, spamming magic missiles, truly. I'm down to learn a skill for Lucius here. Swordsmanship, skills focus strongly on one-on-one -on -one fighting. Warrior skills focus on general combat ability and crowd control. Leadership skills focus on buffing yourself and allies. I'll draw from swordsmanship here. Skill 7, apply 8 vulnerable. 6 damage, attack twice. I like this one. It seems like this this is probably something you're comboing with bleed, but we could maybe try to stack up bleed with him. I'm liking this. Feels like uh, you kind of want to build your party to have synergy or though, where you have like characters, multiple characters applying bleed, etc. But we'll see. Tier one talent. One unlock you can swap in talents while camping. I don't know how you unlock this, because I can't get this now, I don't think. Cleric I saw a lot of intelligence for. Oh, I can get this now. Oh, my bad. I should have grabbed this. Okay. I thought I couldn't get that because of the lock. Intellectual plus four intelligence. Holy shit. And a plus two to all event challenges. And you can get these at 16. Plus two cold resist damage debuff from chill. Okay. I'm not going to read all of these. <laughs> this is a lot to take in. Uh, item cards gain plus one rank on wands. Plus one max channel charge, plus one to fire, cold, and lightning resist. Plus to light armor and intelligence based gear. I'm not I'm gonna read some of these. I'm not gonna read like all of these. I'm gonna I'm probably gonna pick an intelligence one here. If your intelligence is higher than your strength, add half your intelligence modifier to your strength modifier, and then same thing for decks. That's pretty cool to have. 20% more SP when playing cards in battle. Certain skills use strategy points to oh, they're strategy points, not purple points. Start battle with two channel charges, minus one max channel. That sounds cool. I like that. Uh, it makes it so that smite is just going to cost one when I draw it. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is going to cost one, but I'm going to be able to play it immediately, and I like that. But So your damage is a lot of... It's a lot of fire damage. It's fire and physical. Okay. Now, what happens if I set up camp? Ah, setting up camp costs four supplies. I do not wish to do that. Thank you. Let's ride. Hey! Over here, the undead are about to break through. Two arms. Is this, this is going to be a cluttered battlefield, I imagine. The Bertram's joined in two? Yeah, they're going to have to expand this thing. My man did a rebounding hit on an enemy where he couldn't rebound. <laughs> what are you doing, brother? My man. So this goes through, this, there are nine enemies? Okay, everyone, strap in. We're gonna be here a while. I'm gonna mana charge, I think you should start with this. This is gonna be a hell of a long fight. So doing magic damage to these, uh, these skeletons seems to be best. I should quick draw first here. Don't forget to draw. Field 9, gain 11. Critical. Critical goes away, sadly, but we can kill one. Again, spending my SP here pretty liberally, but 
Oh yeah, I have control over you now. Not enough SP. Oh, you, but you start with zero because you just joined me. I see. You're doing a. You're doing a. Gain six. Gain six. Apply nine. Vulnerable. Gain a channel. You don't need a channel. Definitely debilitating bolt. Ah, uh, he blocks the blocks the vulnerable though. Sad. Fine. It does more anyway. These guys have physical resistance, but they have they actually take bonus damage from burn. That's interesting. I wonder if there's ever any merit to. Like, if you're playing the campaign on a super hardcore difficulty, maybe you're trying to start with a fire-based plan so that you can actually burn these skeletons out. Maybe. This is like... Look at look at the initiative order, man. Oh my god. What's even happening here? That's my turn. I have, like, I have a very small... There's a lot that I can calculate here and figure out, but there's also a very small amount that I can actually impact. The enemy- we can look at what the enemies are doing. Okay. What I would have liked, the, and I guess that it's not a big deal, right? But I would like to be able to hover over this tile and see how much damage is hitting this square. I think that that gets a little confusing, though. Apply 29 chill. So I can pick a target here and basically kill them. I feel like the goal, because this is a worthless enemy. This is like a, this is a goon. I think the goal is going to be to break the front here. So we're going to put 29 chill. He lives at 1. What do you have in hand, Catherine? You have bless and strike. So you'll probably play like... This is probably a smite on 1. adjacent targets. Maybe I do Divine Hammer. Yeah, okay. I think that it's it's best because, yeah, Divine Hammer is definitely a play there. Gotcha. Okay. You can bury her up. You'll see. If you don't see it, you'll see it here in a sec. Don't you worry. How much damage is coming out of you? Nine. Block seven. We heal half our max HP when we return to town, right? And I assume we're going back to town after this, so... I think the goal here is going to be to be active, not passive. So, here's the play. This should, if I understand correctly... This does an 18 fire. So if I understand correctly, this Divine Hammer... That did not chain. So it says chain forward, so maybe when it says chain forward it means it has to go, like, forward adjacent. Perhaps. My mistake, I misunderstood. That's fine, it's a learning experience. I will figure out how that chains eventually. Well, in that case, you got, you got six coming at you here. You got nine coming at you here. Can you shift with the barricade? You can, okay. So here's the play. I'm just gonna kill one of these guys. I think it's best to barbecue. Does it go away? Fire and burn damage, please. Oh, this isn't burn damage. So. This is not applying burn the debuff, this is just doing 18 damage and it's fire based. Gotcha. I'm with you now. Feels like a little bit of a waste, but we're gonna start just killing him. And you can swap places. Oh, path is blocked. You cannot swap places with that. Uh, what you should do then is you should move back here, right? Because there's a lot of damage coming through this row, but uh, it'll then, because it, it goes... Yeah, yeah, he has to hit the barricade. That's fine. Good strike, my man. We got two guards on our side. This is not as crazy of a fight as maybe it seemed. It's just, it's a lot. You show me, you show me nine reinforcements on the way. Who, buddy? That's quite a bit, isn't it? But we got three boys on our side. We're chilling. This is a real, real epic battle here. I don't know. How do you feel about combats like this, though? Because I'm, my man, <laughs> my, my brother. What the hell is that play? Okay, I mean, you know what? I trust. Maybe, maybe the elite walks in and that is great. I trust, I trust, I trust. Don't judge too early. Anyway, I feel like these big, like, massive combats, they're cool, don't get me wrong. But they're also, they often feel a little hard to follow. You should one block, one energize, because you can just grab that channel there. Like, it's a lot of work. It's, it's a lot of legwork to figure out what's going on on the turn. Because I gotta go, okay, this guy's doing 7 here. 
This guy's doing eight back right, you're doing 17 guard to yourself, you're doing eight here, you're doing six here, right? And like, I just, uh, there's no better way for them to convey this information to me. It's just a lot of work to, to work it all out. That's my feeling. It's not a big deal though, either. What do we have? We can probably kill here. We have a shift, we have a quick draw. Now, I can back kick melee attacks if I understand correctly. Uh, I would have to move this enemy back if I wanted to hit him, right? Like, if I move him out of the way, I still have to hit him in this row. Because it's rows first, row-wise. I could just rend as well. But I think Catherine is going to get the kill on this guy. Okay. I'm ready. I'm gonna try it. We're trying to maximize our efficiency here. That's the deal. You back kick that guy out of the way. You go... Rend for 13. Oh, they have lower physical resistance. Oh, because they're archers, of course. You're gonna quick draw. That block I don't care about. Drop some low. Catherine could kill two. I feel. But, yeah, sadly some of my damage is just gonna end up wasted, I think. It's fine. It's okay. That's alright. I'm okay. I'm sorry, there's gonna be a little jump there. The dog started barking, so I just waited for them to be done. Alright, where was I? Right. I just wasted damage and was sad, I remember. But there was it was the you know, melee problem. The ability to target anywhere on the map is actually really strong. I kind of didn't uh, respect it initially. Let's see here. It's coming out. It's, no one's attacking Catherine. Oh, but she can't hit this guy. Oh, and she can't move. Huh. Hmm. Or rather, I should say more accurately, she can't write just blow this... Uh, because in the, in the perfect world, I would hit a Righteous Blow here and a Debilitating Bolt here. Oh, you can't even Debilitating Bolt? Oh, really? Oh, is that the case? You have Channel? You have no Channel, right? So you may as well swing for the Channel. Oh, that gives you enough for a shift. Okay. Now, is it worth it for you to shift here, you think? Do the math. You're doing 9. No, I don't think it is. No, I, th I think you just block up and chill. I, like, I need some way for the game to tell me how I get strategy points. Also, the guards do not care. Also, also, uh, Catherine got hit in the fight that we played before this. But she's full health now, which means that if Bertram takes damage but lives, it's probably fine. Oh, look at this dude! On round start, all undead being four. Oh, shit. All undead gain four guards. Hey, you know what? I've decided. By the way, I hope you don't mind. I'm sick of this. I can't. I can't live like this. If you do mind, uh, damn. But anyway, what do we got here? So you can only swing on adjacent ranks here. That's good to note. This is not a potent card, right? So the chill doesn't happen. Oh, but it would happen because it goes through the vulnerable. I just want to do... Uh, this mage takes significantly more physical damage. I could probably actually tunnel this guy then. Or I, I kind of also like just killing the guy next to him first. Like this. And you're... You're good. You can just block up. Six damage, eight damage, seven damage hits here. Okay, so these two guys are going to break this barricade and you're taking 14. Probably not actually going to take 14, though. Oh, yeah, this weapon throw probably annihilates this enemy, right? What does this do? 48? Yeah. You could hit him with, like, a bleed and then a weapon throw. Oh, no, no, you want to do... You want to do it after because Fury is big damage on your next swing, right? So you do weapon throw here. Throw the rend out. Does that do 29 or 15? 15 and 11 is a one damage off. So yeah, I'm down to just kill the mage then. You only spent one actual energy there, so you can use your block. 
14 is not enough, 23 is enough. Do 14 damage, reveal one temporary common heal card. Oh, yeah, you have that. So you gotta kind of make a call here on which enemy you want to have die on this side. And I think it's the mage, right? Well, what's the mage doing? Oh yeah, gain one invulnerable. All, t all allies do not take damage for a all sources for one round. Hey, that seems fucking ridiculous. I will be killing you now. Thank you. Oh, and I didn't even know that did 18. Okay. You know, an ally in your row for 4 HP. Sure, man. I mean, I may as well heal the guard, right? Sure. Why not? Oh, is the why not because that cost me... Where'd that card go? It was expended. Where's my expended pile? Oh, it's just gone. Okay. Never mind. Oh, do not shift. End turn. Good rounds. Like, every, every round of this combat has felt very strong to me. It's like, there's a, there's a lot of enemies, but I always feel like I'm doing enough damage. <laughs> Try harder. Lucius does not have the personality I expected him to have. He's very much a uh, no-nonsense uh, character. I kind of thought he was going to be more of like a happy-go-lucky, plucky type man. My man is like, you missed. Try harder. I expected a little different. Here, capped on channel. These exhaustions are killing Pierre. Very bad. Oh, you, so you can swing through the row. Okay, that's good to know. Like, if I so desire, I can hit this enemy. Which I do kind of. What do you have? Lust strikes? Divine hammer? Oh, but you can't hit here. Right, right. You can't hit this guy. So I'd have to back kick him. But then I could spend one attack from uh, Catherine. Probably one Blessed Strike, and then what? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm good. Just gonna do one of these. Actually, uh, yeah, I don't know why I did it like this. Now I just have to swing on it. Disregard. That was not uh, ideal. But that's fine. We're almost through. This does 14, this does 28. I would like to get you more channel payouts, right? That's what you need now. Yeah, doing all physical damage, I am seeing the weakness. Definitely seems good to have a diverse pool of damage styles in your setup. Ouch. Yeah, I mean, I knew that was happening. It was fine, we have healing. And again, we heal half our HP when we go back to town, so I am not all that worried. But man, you are, like, actually killing me here. Not the enemies, you're killing me. I think I, I kill... No, you know, what, you know what I'm feeling here, actually? I feel as a 100% chance to root a random opposing hero on round start. I feel like I should actually have my units target this guy, because... These guys, they're not going to be able to hit over here, specifically this unit. The guy in the furthest uh, bottom row. I, almost, I really wanted to say furthest right row. I mean, I could. You can't stop me. This guy, though, he would not do well. I do... What is this? Control? It's 6 plus 0. Oh, double slash is a dex attack. I didn't think about that. The card might not have been best for me to take. Oh, well. That was 12 by 2 there. He's low. I don't have a weapon to throw, sadly, but he dies here. Yeah, that seems right. Oh, you can't move because you're rooted, so now you're just done. I guess you could hit our own guy, but I don't think that's ideal. So it seems like we can be pretty flexible with our positioning in the columns. Again, if if I, I, I just want to say, when I say columns, I mean... So rows are up and down, columns are side to side here. I know that's not going to make any sense to you, but it makes sense to me. I will try to explain the logic. Uh, this is When an enemy does a targeted attack, it hits this row, right? 
When it says it hits a row, it doesn't say it hits like this. And so when an enemy does a line-based attack, it hits this column, you see. And melee attacks prioritize front row, second row, third row. So even though from our perspective, the rows are the bottom pieces, in, in terms of how the game talks about it, the rows are the other way. And so I'm going to refer to it in that way. If you get confused, you'll have to just, I don't know, bear with me. And that's how it's, that's just how it's going to work in my mind, and that's how the game seems to talk about it as well. So don't take it up with me. At a moment too soon, let's head up. Back, let's head back to update Captain Roderick. Hey Bertram, uh, I took in. I played this guy in the first book. I took Dead Eye, I think. I I'm starting to see the value of something like Stalker, where you have a bunch of movement and trap placement. So. I'm willing to take him as a stalker. However, I'm probably not going to play him. Not right now, anyway. Right, so now I know, and I should just run for this top option. I think it's just intelligence, right? Yeah, he's at a 19. He's almost at a 20. Yeah, now I know about talents. So again, I'm just going to look. I'm not going to read all of it. I'm just going to read the strength talents. Plus 4 strength, plus 4 max HP, plus 10% max HP. Item cards get plus 1 rank, applies only to blunt weapons and scepters. Plus 1 base damage on melee cards. Plus 1 to max SP. Plus 3 max HP, plus 1 physical resist. Store 4 HP upon surviving a battle. You recover 15% of your max HP when you complete an event challenge. Uh, item cards gain plus 1 rank on shields and plus 2 physical resist. Plus one max fury charges. Item cards get plus one rank on heavy. Two-handed weapon proficiency. When below 30% of your maximum HP you gain guard equal to your strength modifier on turn start, this effect is capped at 10. That's interesting. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be boring here and I'm gonna take plus four strength for now. So the thing is you can swap this out at any time, right? Or not at any time, but in town or while resting. So I can change this later on if I so desire, but plus four strength seems really good. Let's hike on back. I'll do like the we'll do the story wrap up for this beat. We'll get our next quest and I will end the video. Ugh. With your skills and some luck, this threat may be surmountable yet. You need to start venturing out to better prepare for an extended siege. A ragtag team yours may be, but you'll move fast and attract less attention. The resident artisans have managed to set up shop in the area and will need their expertise to give the soldiers a fighting chance. Hear them out and render assistance if needed, and perhaps we might all stand a chance to survive this. Win, win the Enchantress. Hey, isn't that the name of the Enchanter in Dragon Age Origins? Barnaby the Jeweler? Dana the Innkeeper? June the Blacksmith? Uh, I will talk to... I, I don't want to do all of the dialogue now, and I don't want to do all the dialogue at the start of the next one, so I'll go talk to the Innkeeper. <laughs> Dana's the name. I run the inn here. <laughs> yeah. Do you? I would have never guessed. We have supplies and energy brews to keep you out adventuring longer. And never have enough of them. If you are inclined to, I can set you up with a bed and board for the night. Strophelia's healing may take care of your wounds, but it's no replacement for a good night's rest. How much? Five dollars. Oh, and if you pay more, you get more. Okay, I'll pay five. Now, I don't, in, I don't interpret this game as having a time mechanic where, like, resting hurts me, but... Who knows? Well. I'll go talk to Win the Enchantress as well real quick. Greetings, Traveler. I'm currently working on a way to restore the waypoints, but I'll need access to the library and its veritable trove of knowledge. Undoubtedly, it'll be overrun with undead now, and it is also an opportune time for me to leave the garrison. If you're able to accomplish this, we may be better off yet. Uh, what I'll do is I will go through and I'll talk to everyone at the start of the next one, and I'm, I'm not going to read all of the dialogue, but I'll skim it, because I want to see if anyone has any side quests. And I, I want to see if the game makes me, like converse with this lady to get the side quest right but for now thank you for watching if you enjoyed don't forget to leave me a like subscribe if you want to see more i'll see you in the next one have a good one